Uh, and Ankur, you're going to be talking about the, the top 25 new features in Autodesk. Um, you're sharing your screen, and it digitizes the uh, slides a bit. So, no, sorry, not that. You're sharing your camera, and it digitizes the um, quality of the slides a little bit. So, I think if you turn off your camera, you okay. get uh, better. It's it's tough because I prepared a nicer tab, uh, chameleon chameleon themes tab after behind me. But yeah, okay, I will do. Cool, thanks. Okay, so I I will start because I I believe I need every minute of my slot. So as uh, Doug already said, my name is Ankur, and I'm going to present you the top twenty five new features in Just and Auto Just which is a title that uh, encompasses several questions, like, first of all, what is Just? Uh, well, I guess most of the audience know, but anyway, it's the installer and also the configuration tool for all OpenSUSE Linux distributions. That's uh, um, OpenSUSE uh, Lib, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And it's also the installer and the configuration tool for SUSE Linux Enterprise, that's we usually call SLE. And so next question will be, well, then what's AutoJust? And as the name suggests, basically it's the autopilot for Just. So while Just is by nature an interactive tool, with AutoJust you can perform, perform unattended installations with Just and unattended configuration of systems without the need of a human, a human being just going through all the steps. So next question will be, what do I really mean when I say new features, like how recent? must be a feature to be included in this talk. Well, what I did is basically if the feature, if a feature was already there in lib 15.0, that's it, uh, in, in SLE 15 without service packs, then I consider that feature is already old. So it's, it will not be included. So it's only things that appear in 15.1 or later. And the ultimate question. So. What's the criteria to select the 25 features? That's actually the easiest one to, to answer. It's my very own personal taste. So uh, you may be also wondering about, about the order, if it's a ranking in which number one is like the coolest, but there's nothing uh, of that. That will be not only controversial, but also quite some work. So I will go just in chronological order. So first presenting things that are not so super new, I'm uh, finishing with the more recent. Actually, the last one is not even in Tumbleweed yet, so it's kind of a sneak peek, an exclusive for you. So since I'm pretty short on time to present 25 things, I will start uh, actually presenting two features at once because both are kind of, um, they have like a shared purpose, which is uh, allowing to configure the access to your system without the need of using passwords. Uh, one, the first feature which is actually used already during installation and allows you to set the authentication for the root user. So when you're, that's a small animation of the installation process, you get to the next screen, which is the password for root. So you can see there that you have room for password and also for, for SSH public key. It tells you that you cannot leave both blank, but you could, uh, you can use both or one or the other. So in this case, if we decide to go for a purely SSH-based authentication without the password for root, I'm not sure if it's if you can really distinguish it, but well, the the JAS already uh, uh, automatically selects uh, SSH to be running and open the port and all that. Even in recent versions, all in Tumbleweed, we went one step further, and if you then manually close the firewall, it will you will see a red alert like, okay, you have passwordless root. You can only authenticate through SSH key. You are closing SSH. You better beware. Of course, you can continue, but well, it will alert you. And when you have the system already installed, you should know that you can use just to create users, to delete users, to modify them. And now you have that SSH public keys tab in every user. In this example, we have one called admin, another one called SUSE, and we are just going through each of them, adding or removing SSA keys. You could even do it for the root user, like uh, for example, in the example that we added SSA key for it, but we want to have another one because we have two different people really using the, the SSH, the, the root user with their own accounts. 
So you can do everything from, from the just interface. And well, if you know something about SSH configuration, you can check that what we did with the just interface produced the expected result in the SSH directories. And also for those that are not familiar with just, though that blue thing you saw is basically the just interface when running in a console because one of the cool features of just the old old time features is not not new at all is that uh, you can run it in in a console and get exactly the, the an equivalent interface to the graphic mode so another thing that you can also do during installation and afterwards it's uh, configuring the mitigation for the famous cpu vulnerabilities specter and meltdown that you probably know uh, you know that all operating system had to introduce uh, yeah mm, mitigations for them that uh, that have a big impact on performance so when, you, when you're installing open source or SLE, you already have in the installation summary in the installation setting summary which is one of the screens that you see there you see a shortcut so you can uh, choose which level of protection against uh, i mean protection versus performance you want to configure there are many options are perfectly documented in the help as you can see there and you can you can also tweak it afterwards in the bootloader settings but you can do it already during installation so you have your system perfectly secure uh, since second one we introduced that in 50.1 and we actually got ported to to older distributions as well and another thing we introduced in 50.1 was an improved management for services because, well, as most all time Linux users know, uh, a lot of things have changed since we introduced systemd. So we revamped the whole module module to use, well, concepts like the system targets instead of the root levels. You can configure services to be started on demand using systemd sockets uh, activation. For each service, you can also, you have a show lock button that will show you the, the system, the journal for that specific service and so on and so on. So basically everything that can be configured regarding services in system D can be done through just since 15.1. Another cool technology that we also made easier to configure is Bcash. In case you don't know what it is, it's um, a technology that allows you to combine a fast disk, which are usually small because they are expensive and an, a slower but bigger disk into one virtual device. And that virtual device is, uh, has the best of both worlds. So it's fast and also big. And all that can be configured uh, through the JAS partitioner, which is this special part of JAS we use, we offer to configure RAID, uh, LBN, etc. And again, you can do it already during the installation process or of course afterward. And another JAS module that we gave some love uh, for the 50.1 release is, the, is kind of unknown. That's what I wanted to highlight it here, which is the JAST configuration management module. Uh, it had some kind of bridge between uh, JAST and configuration management systems like Puppet or Salt. Specifically, it's, it's kind of Salt-centric because it's the technology we use more in in SUSE and OpenSUSE, and we improve it with support for SUSE manager salt parameterizable formulas, in case it's pronounced like that. And we also integrated better with first boot, you with just first boot. Just first boot is a cool just functionality that allows you to um, configure the system in a way that in the next boot, usually the first one, it will uh, open directly just with the steps you have configured. So the first user that uh, used the computer for the first time will have the opportunity to configure things like the network, uh, creating users, and so on. So uh, another cool feature is uh, that support for installing on Raspberry Pi. You may, seem, you may say that actually you can install many different Linux distributions on Raspberry Pi, but that's not exactly true. With other distributions, you actually don't install them. You just download an image for Raspberry Pi and you put that image into the SD card. So you basically put into your into your Pi the somebody else operating system. But that's not the case with OpenSUSE. With OpenSUSE, uh, you just take the standard Open OpenSUSE distribution or the standard SUSE Linux Enterprise. It's not a Raspberry Pi image, and it's not an image at all. It's just the installer. And you go through the process like in any other computer through installer next next you configure whatever you want and 
and it partitions the devices and install. And just can do that. And also the good thing is that just is aware of the very special requirements for Raspberry Pi, like the, it has to be a concrete partitioning schema with a concrete uh, type of partition table and so on and so on. So it will auto suggest you the correct settings. And if you decide to use the expert partitioner, it will also war warn you if you are doing something that is not going to boot. Uh, and that was already there in 15.1, and we improved it for 15.2, which is exactly the same that happened with the firewall D configuration. So in historically, SUSE has used a firewall called SUSE Firewall, and SUSE and OpenSUSE. We switched to firewall D in 15.0, and then uh, later we updated just to manage uh, firewall D. So you can do yeah, basically everything, configure the 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 general settings, configure the songs, or even creating new songs, which is a very nice combined with the ability of just of running in, of running in a console. Because although Firewall D has its own interface, is graphical one, but with just you can basically do everything using the console. Because the, as I said, the interface is equivalent to this one that you can see there. Also, we improved already in 15.1 the error reporting for AutoJust because, yeah, AutoJust uh, has kind of an uh, historical problem that you, when it finds an error, you can configure what it should do. But that happened that actions are applied when the error has already appeared. So, already during the installation process, you have an error. Okay, you can configure what to do, but it's usually too late. So in 15.1, since we read it part of the partitioning section, we took the opportunity to add previous checks, like uh, consistency checks. Uh, it looks like the if what the profile says makes sense for your machine, because the profile is how you how you tell AutoJust how it should behave. And maybe you are telling things that doesn't make much sense for the machine in which AutoJust is running. So it will tell you exactly which part of the profile contains an error and why. It worked quite well, so we improved it. We extended it for 15.2, for also for the firewall uh, section, for the network section, and we will keep doing it for more. So about network, we improved not only uh, that AutoJust integration, we did actually a lot of internal work. We improved a lot of the internals about how we manage network. And as a side effect of it, we improved. We added some small new features and improved the interface. So wireless configuration is better now. Also, the overview of the bond and bridge interfaces is more clear. And the, the user interface for defining routes was really not, ex well, was not the most usable thing. So now it should be much better, as it happens also with uh, uh, support for mainframe for S390 systems. If you have ever used one of those systems, you know that there are several device which are extra steps you have to do for the devices to be really usable and now you can the interface to do that is much more usable as as well as the udf one so going back to the partitioner so i'm going in chronological order so i will be jumping topics a bit uh, we uh, apart from the already mentioned big cache support we also added uh, support for multi-device better face Again, I hope you know what BetterFS is, but if not, it's basically a file system type that is actually the default one for most uses of OpenSUSE, honestly. So uh, apart from offering everything that the file system should offer, it also has some advanced capabilities. Like, for example, you can have the same file system on top of several devices, of several hard disks, for example. So in that regard, it kind of combines the features of a file system and the features of LBN or the features of a software rate. It's something, yeah, something like a mix of a file system and those technologies. And again, with the expert partitioner, you can configure such a write, so-called write better fest that extends on several devices already during installation or afterward. <laughs> OK, so more things about the, um, the partitioner. Uh, it has always had an, a checkbox. So you can, when you're creating a partition or any other virtual device, you can encrypt it. But uh, yeah, that was all. So under the surface, that was using a technology called Lux, uh, Lux One to be precise. But now when you select to encrypt, we are offering extra options. Uh, for example, for swap devices, you can go for a 
um, volatile encryption with a random key, which is more secure, but also has some impact on hibernation and that kind of things. But again, you have a very comprehensive help that will explain you. And if you happen to have a IBM C-series mainframe, uh, and you happen to own a very specific uh, cryptographic device called a crypto adapter. Uh, and that's a super cool device that allows like James Bond level security. So it ensures that only the owner of that computer with that car and configured in the very same way can access to the information that was written by that computer. So it's, as I said, very secure, but also not so easy to configure. But now um, you have uh, uh, options for configuring that there. And another security uh, feature from IBM mainframes is the is secure boot. It has nothing to do with WEFI secure boot. Uh, I mean, from a, it has a lot to do because it's basically for avoiding to boot the system by untrusted people. But in general, there is a completely different concept and implementation. But we now support it and we kind of unified the interface with the WEFI secure boot because, well, you have one or the other if you have a mainframe, you are not using WEFI. If you're using WEFI, you don't have a mainframe. So both actually look now similar. And we took the opportunity also to add a shortcut in the installation settings that you can see there to enable and disable secure with, with a simple check. Um, OK, so I have mentioned mainframes. I have mentioned Raspberry Pis. You already know that you can install OpenSUSE or, or SLA basically in all kind of computers. But recently, we can now install also Linux inside of Windows with this famous or infamous Windows subsystem for Linux. So actually, in this case, you don't install it. It's really like downloading an image and then running a configuration process. And that's, as I mentioned, something that just can do very well because we have just, five, just first boot that does that initial configuration process for a system. So what we did was adapting first boot to work kind of nicely or well, better than before. Not say, I will not say nicely talking about Windows, but yeah, it works better now with WSL version one. And also we adapted the, the, the control center so it will only display the modules that really make sense because yeah, inside WSL, you cannot do everything that you could do regularly. So it's uh, yeah, it will only show you things that make sense. Another feature, it's uh, for it's quite specific for SUSE Linux Enterprise. I will speed up a little bit. Uh, so it's basically when you install SUSE Linux Enterprise, you have uh, like the base product, and then most of the software is actually located in different modules and extensions that you install on top. Some of them require a registration key. And also, you can get software from what is called the SUSE Package Hub. But in general, you will not find them by just zipper because you have to first configure the module, register it, so on. So the software manager, the JAS software manager, now has a sibling application that allows to search for those packages that are, it actually relies on the SUSE Customer Center, which is a, set, a central place that knows all the packages. So you can find in which module the package is, and it will assist you through the registration and so on of the module. And next feature is a kind of a small one, kind of an implementation detail, but I wanted it to mention for two reasons. So it's basically that you have a just module to configure the NTP client, and you can with it you can schedule NTP synchronizations. Uh, so we switch from using cron to using systemd, which is apart from an implementation detail is important as a feature because uh, now we have better compatibility with the Chrome diamond because it's Chrome is, is running, our timer will not try to synchronize. That's a conflict that we used to have in Chrome. And it's also a nice example of how we try to update just as time permits to do things in the new Linux way, let's say. So it, if you are a system administrator using just in essentially chains under your feet, well, we try. That just saves you from that. Which takes me to the next one, which is uh, something that you may know that in SUSE, uh, and OpenSUSE, uh, we are changing the way in which the configuration of the package is being uh, distributed. 
So it's not longer a, for every package, a big file living in ETC. Now the packages actually install the configuration in user ETC, and then ETC will be completely specific to that machine and will contain only only things that override the package uh, configuration. But again, it's not expected to be just a big file, but broken into pieces, like uh, ETC something D for the server something, for the service or package something. So uh, we are trying to adapt just to that for all the packages that are being breaking down into pieces. So that's good because just will offer you a consolidated view. So when you open just, you see the configuration that is really in place, not just the file on ETC or in user ETC, but we actually compound the result and that's what we saw. And also we try to write educated files between ETC, whatever, dot D and with a number. We, some of those files were already uh, splitted for 15.2. So we adapted just and we are, yeah, there are more and more packages changing in Tumblr and we're trying to keep we keep up with it. So about keeping up with Tumblr with and, and all releases, uh, this is also another new feature for uh, IBM mainframes. Again, this uh, if you use these devices, so these, these machines in Linux, there are some extra steps like the one I, I, I mentioned for the network. It's the same for storage and other parts. So you have to do some manual configuration in order to use the devices in Linux. So uh, IBM recently introduced a, a feature that allows to kind of automate that, but well, it needs support from the operating system. So we introduced it. It's already available in the quarter, what we call the quarterly update of SLE 15SP2. Uh, if you use lib on your mainframe, it didn't make it to lib 15.2 because we don't release uh, quarterly updates for lib as far as I know. But if you are using Tumble within your mainframe, which can be the case, then that feature should be available for you as well. So now, okay, I have eight minutes. So I, I would like to go through some of the since we have been recently improving in the area of AutoJust, because we have uh, uh, invested uh, some time improving things there. So as I, as I said before, the, we have the AutoJust profile, which is the file you give to AutoJust to tell him or to tell it how to use Just to configure and to install the system. So we have improved the parser. Now it's, uh, it reports accurate errors. In the past, we just said something is wrong. It was not very polite. Now it will tell you what is wrong. And we also introduce an alternative syntax where you can actually use both mixed. So it's completely backward compatible. That is shorter for specifying types, collections, and so on. And since now we have a validator that, well, it's useful, we have integrated into the process. Uh, so before even trying to read the profile, it will run the validation and will tell you if something is wrong. And uh, again, uh, for that profile, something that many users do is having one single profile that then mm, mm, using in several different machines. So they want uh, the installation to be slightly different depending on which exactly machine, what exactly the size of the disks or and these kind of things. So for that, we have dynamic AutoJust profiles that you could uh, do with a feature called press scripts. So on top of that, now we have a, uh, build support for ERB, which is embedded Ruby. So you can have a snippets of Ruby code within your XML that will be executed and substituted by the final content. And uh, to make that more usable, we have now a test client that will pr fetch the profile just in the very same way that just or auto just will do it. We'll apply rules and classes, which is like the deprecated way of having dynamic profiles. And we'll also use the non-deprecated ones with this combining press scripts um, and embedded Ruby. And we finally do a, a syntax check and tell you if the result is actually usable for AutoJust. So uh, mm, about generating uh, profiles, we, you can do it. Uh, uh, there is a module in Jazz in your install system that you can use to create a profile, kind of a, what you, uh, an editor. And we have improved it also a lot. And that's the, all, all the changes I mentioned about Tayas are all in Tumbleweed so far. So it's, they are not in lib 15.2. They are pretty recent. So um, so we improved the interface uh, since now we have Bcash, uh, 
multi-device better fares and advanced decryption. We had to redo the whole thing and we took the opportunity to improve it a lot. So now it's way more useful and yeah, way more powerful. But most people actually don't, don't do profiles using that tool. What most people do is they install a system and then they clone it. Let's say they, they generate the profile out of it with that comment that is that, that command, sorry, just clone system. Uh, the problem is that it creates a, a representation of the full system, uh, which is usually too much. It includes details that are not relevant. So we now have included the possibility to do just clone system target compact that will give you a smaller uh, profile with all these things that are that look really relevant. Like for example, just users will uh, used to export all the users, even the, the system users. It will not do that anymore. By the way, the, the slide is wrong. You say it does not export non-system users. It's exactly the opposite. Now it will not export system users. Firewall will only uh, export songs that you have edited. The service manager will only export services that are different from the default, etc. etc. Also, we have improved the compatibility with uh, advanced LBN features like LBN CAS, LBN RAID. In the past, in 15.0, basically, when one of those systems was, well, one of those LBN setups was found, you got a pop up like that one saying that, well, it was an special LBN and the number of operations was limited and things could even go wrong. Now that's not the case anymore. It's true that we don't allow to create LVN cache with the RAID partitioner or LVN RAID or nothing of that. You cannot modify the setting of the LVN RAID, but you can use it normally. You can edit it, you can delete it, you can install on top of it. You can upgrade a system, for example, that is installed of, on top of an LVN cache if you, do, if you did it manually and so on. And uh, this feature is, is uh, partly for users and partly for yeah, people creating distributions like like Richard that will talk after me. And so we have improved the ways in which you can uh, configure the layout of the installer and also of just first boot. Because as I said, you usually install the system and then configure first boot to run and you the, give the machine, to some, the machine to someone else to do the first initial configuration of the network or whatever. But that uh, first boot was not always looking very nice and especially was not always looking like the installation process. Now you can configure it to look to both look equal or different as you wish. And you can decide to have a, a sidebar with the steps that are being performing, a, a header or whatever. So it's basically all the customization possibilities the distribution creator has for their installer you have it for first boot as well and okay i was able to do it on time so that's the last slide as i told you that's a gift for you a sneak peek on the feature um because this feature is still not in tumbleweed but basically as i have said uh, many times that uh, we have uh, improved the partitioner here and there and there so it has too much functionality, well, not too much, but a lot. So we redid the interface uh, and now you have that menu where we have put many options that used to be in buttons. So now the buttons are more clear, are only the buttons that really make a lot of sense and more esoteric sex, uh, options are in the menu. And as you can see, you have there the um, sub volumes, for example, are represented already in the tables, are more accessible and easier to configure and so on. So. That was all. Just a quick note: I took all the information, all the screenshots, all the animation for uh, from our blog, which is unsurprisingly just slash blog and we publish a post every two weeks explaining what we are doing, and also big posts sometimes explaining uh, concrete topics. So if you want to keep up to date, just just visit our blog, subscribe to it, or whatever, because. As I said, everything. This is basically a summary of coolest thing there. Okay, oh, thanks for the link. Uh, not sure if we have time for some questions that I see in the chat, or or Richard needs to step into already. I can give you a minute or two if people have questions. Okay, the slides. Well, the slides I I have loaded to some next cloud uh, URL I was given. I'm not sure what's the public URL, but Doug probably knows or can say more about it. 
I think Doug's flipped to the other channel, but most of the time they'll be available on events.opensuse.org. Okay. With the schedule. And and uh, what you mean with encrypt encrypted LBN, like a logical volume management with encryption? That's perf that's possible since ever you can encrypt the you can either decide to encrypt the physical volumes and then put LBN on top, or you can decide to encrypt every single logical volume on its own. But yeah, it's always has always been possible. That's what I didn't mention. It's basically you can encrypt everything that can be encrypted with a just partition. Okay. Then the stage is yours, Richard. 